there's actually two that I confused. They were both at the Anthrax up in uh, Norwalk in 88, uh, no, late 87, in the fall. Like, I saw either Absolution and Heads Up, the old, like, funk hardcore band. I saw them first, or it was Seven Seconds and Heads Up. And, you know, because I was going to see Heads Up, they were friends of mine, like, um, from back in the day or whatever. And, like, I'm not, I can never, I always get confused as to which was the other band. And both times, Absolution did two sets around them, and Seven Seconds did two sets around them also. It was crazy. And then, you know, I was hooked from there. They're on. <laughs> well, again, the Anthrax is actually my main one. I love that club. It had the nice height stage, about like three feet high, no bouncers, you know, it was run by kids, you know, just had a great time. In New York City, the Marquee. I loved the Marquee back in the day. For a nice medium-sized club, man, I miss having a venue like that, you know? Saw some crazy shows there. I mean, Hardcore wise, and also Fishbone, Primus, first time I ever saw those guys. I mean, it was just a good time to see like Prong back in the day there. It just, they had the right, I don't know, right size, you know, like on the bigger side, you know, great, great sound and whatnot. I gotta go out, my man, Little Greg, Red Eye Devil, everybody gets hurt, Tara Rav, you know, nobody danced like him. I mean, he was so small too, he was Spider Man, jumping over. Jumping on my drums while I was playing. He literally jumped over my cymbals a bunch of times, would be up on the pipes, over my head. Or the craziest time on the pipe was at the Super Bowl in 2006 when he went off of the balcony hand over hand on the pipe, like 25 feet above the ground, literally, and like got out to the middle, like turned around, and looked back at all of us on the balcony and realized he couldn't crawl back and just dropped and landed on a couple friends of ours, hurt him a little bit, but like bounced away, ran into the pit and kept going. And we were just like, how, how did that just happen, man? Mackie, uh, Earl Hudson, I have to give props. I haven't seen a lot of people say him, man, but you know, he started all this and constantly giving the flavor. And, man, there's so many. Will Shepler is another one that I feel like people have uh, not brought up enough, you know? For this AF days and Madball, I mean, I was a huge fan, huge influence. I think. One of the craziest shows I saw was definitely the Super Bowl of 92 when uh, Burn, Sheer Terror, and that was when Breakdown played and they tried to push him off stage before uh, they got to play Sick People and it was almost a riot. I remember Mike Dijon just taking the guitar and just screaming at dudes and just, man, uh, that, that was a great show overall, man. Really, just a lot of, uh, you know, that goes back to a venue almost, like all the shows at the Ritz, even though that was the new Ritz, Studio 54, there was always some crazy times there. SOD, Agnostic Front. Yeah, I wish I saw Minor Threat. That's definitely the top. I, mean, I wish I saw the Bad Brains at the height of their powers, like when they were really raging. I, had, I was supposed to see them at the Anthrax, actually, in like 88, I think, and they ended up canceling it. There's one of the times they broke up, and it was around something, and they canceled last second. And I just, so I didn't get to see them until Rise Tour with Israel. And I mean, that was cool and all, but, yeah, but I just wish I had gotten to see like the, you know, the full on early, mid 80s. It was definitely my favorite band, so. No. I was always confused by that. I remember going to shows at, I guess at Wetlands it was, like Bond Street, like around 93, and I'd been in hardcore for years already, but like not in the city. And I was online, actually, for the Wetlands. I might have been with Todd the Kid from Warzone and District 9. And there were these punk rock kids had the N and whatever, and I was like, what is that? Like, I don't even know, like, what is that symbol? And he was like, oh, there's like squatters. And I was like, squatters? And he, I was like, he's like, yeah, people like just live in like, you know, like they're homeless and live in like empty buildings or whatever. And I was like, what, people just do that? <laughs> Like, I honestly didn't even know. <laughs> Bronx. I, mean, I, I was born uptown, up in Harlem. I grew up in Westchester, but Billy Club Sandwich, Bronx band. I know the Bronx. I know the north side of town. Brooklyn was a foreign world to me. I never went to Lemoore's proper. Like, I went to the later, more recent versions in the last 10 years, but I never got to go to show Lemoore's. That was worlds away from Westchester. Like, we would go to the Ritz. Roseland to the Academy, you know, because we'd take the train right to Grand Central, walk from there. But the thought of taking the train to more subways and another subway out, we just never even tried. And actually, between Queens and Brooklyn, going back to your question, I have to say Queens. I played in Setback, played in No Redeem and Social Value, I played in a rock band called the Clay Pigeons, another Queens band. So if any borough, I know Queens pretty well. And Brooklyn is still a foreign land to me. I mean, even now, I got to go more and more for Williamsburg and Greenpoint, but I, I still don't really know the place. <laughs> Hell yeah, 
so psyched to be playing the Black and Blue Bowl again. I mean, we played in 2005, played the first one, you know, the, the comeback or whatever you want to call it. And then 2007, we got to play it again. And then after this long hiatus, it was the only proper way to do it, you know? Like when we were talking about if we do get to come back and where would we want to do it, how to do it, it's like, to be the best. And, and to get to play Webster Hall now, Old Ritz, uh, definitely could be nice to check that off. Um, but yeah, man, and Joey's giving us a lot of props here, you know? Having us come on and be the first announcements is crazy. I just hope we live up to it. <laughs> <laughs>Hell no. Hardcore is not dead. How could it be? We've got a black and blue bowl coming again. Bands are coming back. New bands are coming up. That's has always been crazy to me. I mean, it's funny, it's, you know, as far as hardcore dead, it's supposedly it died in 86, right? According to half these books and movies, which that sucks for me. I got into it in 87. So it's always hurt me that uh, I, apparently I got into it when it was already dead, but yet here I am still playing in bands, still doing it. Stigma's still here. Gestapo's still here. Drew Stone's still here. People have been at it since long before it died and it's news to us, right?